Let's start with DuPont, or you could use its longest name, or its longer name, which is named after the founder, E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company. That's a bit weird. DuPont, everybody calls it DuPont. Science-based products and services. So it's got a whole slew of different segments. So this is kind of what we were relating there. Agriculture, electronics, communications, industrial, biosciences, crops, that sort of thing as well. Health performance materials like Kevlar and so on, which is used in bulletproof vests, I'm not kidding, safety, <laughs> protection, all sorts of stuff that's used in the global industry that we've been referring to here. Pretty big company, $58.55 billion worth of market cap. So, I mean, 58.55 is sort of sizable, but not mega cap like some of the ones we see. Apple, for example, 10 times the size of that. A couple of other companies with 300 billion market caps. Price to earnings ratio, you know that's a measure of its earnings, 26.92. Solid dividend yield uh, by U.S. standards at 2.24 percent. Okay, Grant. So, what stands out for you with DuPont? Well, I think it's first of all that broad array uh, of industries that they sell into. Yeah. Uh, it seems like an extremely innovative uh, company, constantly uh, researching new developments. Um, yeah. Very technical product. Um, so. Well, let's go through the list. Neoprene, which is used in uh, wetsuits. Teflon, that's which right. is the stuff that's in your frying no, pan. Nonstick to pans. Mylar and Kevlar, which are the stuff that is used in bulletproof mm, vests and by the U.S. military and that sort of thing. Tyvek. Now, Tyvek is interesting. This is a new one of theirs. If you ever go and do a race these days, you know, like a running race, that sort of fabric-y stuff that you can write on that doesn't oh, yeah. take on water, doesn't get sure. decayed. That's the race numbers. That's, that's Tyvek. Lycra, which is used to make uh, leggings and uh, gym pants, uh, stretchy. Freon, which is used. So, I mean, these are just... And also Fantastic. a lot of materials uh, used in technology um, and uh, digital um, devices. Electronics devices. Electronics well. devices. Yeah. So screens, uh, mobile devices. So uh, really positioned uh, yeah. very, very well, I think. So headquartered in Wilmington, Delaware. Company that's been in existence since 1802. Mm. Started out its life in making gunpowder, that kind of thing. But here's the thing. We're going to talk about DuPont and Dow because they're the two largest players, they are in the process of trying to pull off a merger. That's so right. that's weird. We've got two stocks on hot stocks. One's trying to buy the other. So mar combined market cap, I think, is going to be in the region of $130 billion. Right. Um, so although it might not be big on that $58 billion it's that you mentioned, bigger. it's going to get much bigger. So the plan is to merge and then to split themselves up again. That's interesting. So they're going to, having merged, their proposal anyways after two years is to actually break the company sure. into three bits. And I'm obviously, I'm not entirely clear as I sit here which three bits, but they're going to have some sort of process of division. So I think what they are going to do is split the business between uh, the agricultural divisions. Okay. Um, so both Dow and DuPont have an agricultural division. So that's crops and seeds, uh, herbicides, that kind of stuff. That's right. So yeah. uh, essentially all the way through from uh, selling uh, the seeds. So uh, very special seeds uh, yeah. designed for very high yields. Similar to Monsanto. We had a conversation about this in a similar show. That's right. And then crop protection, uh, where your herbicides, your insecticides uh, yeah. all come together. And then your speciality materials division, uh, which I think is going to be the biggest division. Um, okay. And that would be uh, predominantly uh, your packaging division, um, mm -hmm. your automobile uh, part division. Um, and then I think what they call uh, their speciality products, where uh, what we mentioned now, bunch of mobile devices, all those uh, very interesting oh, okay. new technologies. So I think stuff. Yeah. that's probably how they will be splitting the business. Okay, but so far so good. I mean, they proposed a merger of two giant companies and the share prices of both. Well, speaking of share price, let's have a look at the share price of DuPont. So you can see it's been a bit rocky. That's a five-year chart. According to my numbers, the all-time high was $81 a share. So that's probably there in March 2015. Then it has a little bit of a slide. Markets don't look all that sharp. Now it's kind of moving a little bit higher. But it hasn't really shot the lights out in recent years. What are you thinking? I mean, does the deal happen? And if it happens, which of the two ought you to be getting into, I guess? So, I mean, it's really difficult to call. Um, yeah. But uh, there is a lot of overlap in those two businesses. So 
I think if the deal does go ahead, um, it would be really beneficial for shareholders. Yeah. I think they're talking efficiencies of about $4 billion per annum. Okay, uh, so which it's the cost massive. saving synergies of putting them together. But if they're quite similar, doesn't that create concerns with regulators about specific markets where they might have a very, very dominant position? It does, mm -hmm. uh, but I think what we could see uh, very similar to the SAB and the Bush deal is that they sell off some of their non-core yes. uh, so markets. So they agree, they get you will only get approval if you agree to dispose of this or dispose of yeah. that. That's right. Yeah. Okay, good. Hot or not on DuPont? I'm hot. Hmm. I'm going to go hot on this one. I like it. Okay. I think I'm going to go not hot uh, on account of just this somewhat of a confused position with regard to the deal. But let's hold that thought for a moment. Let's